stand up. Good evening. My name is Mark Budnick. I'm from Valparaiso University, and with me today are Armin Surushian from Arizona, oh, sorry, University of Arizona, Harry Powell from University of Virginia, Noah Malmstadt from USC, Ramtin Shioshanshi, Ramtin Shioshanshi from Ohio State, sorry, the Ohio State University, <laughs> Soham Sohoni from Arizona State, and Farshid Sabihian from Institute of Technology, West Virginia University. Um, it's never easy to go last after a long day. And I invite you, um, it's kind of fortuitous that we ended up going last, to put away your textbooks or your phones or your laptops for just 10 minutes. So I think what we kind of came up with is a really nice summative experience for this entire uh, couple days together. And I'm a little sad that we actually don't get a chance to get together over dinner and talk more as a group because I think that it really would have been interesting seeing how this all came together from all of our different projects today. Um, ours was talking about the projects in a mixed mode classroom, and we came in with a lot of different ideas about what that actually meant, and we probably spent more time discussing the name of our project than almost anything else. Because I think that once you decide on what that name is that you're working on, it's very easy to decide what goes in and what goes out. And so we really looked at how you can go ahead and provide a different educational experience through projects or problems or experiential learning in a different type of classroom setting. Um, so the first thing we talked about is what was the most challenging part about implementing your innovation. Um, this is me wrestling with my dean. <laughs> I'll let you decide which one is the dean. I'm here in sunny California. He's up in the cold and snow. So. Um, what you're going to see here from our presentation is a lot of different bullet points. We did not go back and edit out any of them so that when you go back and have a opportunity to look at all the different things that you see in the different presentations today, you will see our stream of consciousness as you go through these different things. I want to point out a couple highlights from these four different topics, um, but what was most challenging about implementing your innovation? The first thing people talked about was time. When I look at we have two different resources that we can manage in our lives. We have time and we have money. And if we want to do one, it's going to cost something of the other. And we really talked about what's going to be in terms of faculty preparation, the amount of momentum that may be lost from existing classes that have already been prepared or started. We also talked about right-sized laboratories, being able to put your classroom into an environment that you can go ahead and go from a lecture to a discussion to a laboratory setting smoothly and easily so that you can provide the best learning opportunity for a student. Um, I'm old enough to think that there are still times where I can be the sage on the stage and provide the best experience for students. And the ones that I do that on sometimes are the ones that students come back five or ten years later on and say, I remember that one lecture better than anything else in my four years there. But there's other times that I look back and say, the best thing for me to do is to throw my students to the wolves and let them figure something out on their own. And then I'll walk around and do that management by, uh, management by walking around or teaching by walking around. Um, <coughs> what has worked well? We have all piled uh, higher and deeper. Um, so what we've been working on for our PhDs and how we go about doing this is really a, a, a challenging thing for us is what has worked well, what's not worked well. We kind of threw out all these different ideas about what happened to us when we were doing these different things. And you see some of the different things that worked well for our groups. And what we'll say is that every single class is going to be different. Every single group of students is going to be different. A lot of different people that I talked to the last couple of days indicated that every year your classes seem to have different personalities, overachievers, underachievers, mischievous people, whatever it's going to be. And any given time, you may take a look at what has worked well one semester, may not work well the next semester. All right? How are you documenting the impact of your innovation? It was interesting that when we sat down and talked, most of us did not set out to try to revolutionize the world or develop this flipped classroom or whatever it may be, or developing something that was project-based learning. We all had an idea four or five years ago that we wanted to try something new and different, and it kind of evolved into something. And we all kind of looked at each other and said, well, how are we going to go back and actually talk about documenting this innovation and assessing it? And we came up with some ways that I thought were all very good. But at the end, I really think that we already have assessments, or we should have assessments in place about whether or not we're doing a job as an educator. And I really believe that those assessments should more or less be agnostic to the format by which I am teaching them. Am I doing my job teaching my students about quantum mechanics, or C coding, or flowcharts, or MATLAB, or heaven forbid, something that might actually be useful, ethics or finance. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a serious type of question. And these are all different things that we can do to try to go back and assess those things. But more or less, we're all engineers. We should be taking a look at these different types of topics. And I think that this is one area that we, as a group of faculty, 
on a organization or a workshop or a school or a college or a university or a country or a world can more or less come up with ways that we can best assess things like that. And I really look at organizations like ABET and challenge them to try to find a better way to come up with ways to assess student learning and how faculty get involved in that student learning. Um, how do you scale the innovation up? This is one of my students' graphs. Height of line versus distance from the right, left. Um, what is up and to the right? All right, what does that mean to everybody? And we stood and looked at what is up to the right means, and we said, we have no idea. <laughs> there are a lot of different things you can talk about up and to the right. We have up and to the right in terms of we want to have more students because most of us are tending to have larger and larger classes or larger number of students coming in. We talked about trying to propagate it amongst different faculty or amongst different departments, bring it out to different universities. And there's lots of different things we took a look at. But the things that we walked away from is that it can no longer be business as usual. The world is changing. The world has needs that are going to be pressing down upon it like they have never pressed down before. Seven billion people on this planet are going to put stresses on it that did not exist 20 or 40 or 50 years ago. All right? It cannot be business as usual. We have to be working as a people to find ways to solve problems. All right? And that means that we need to make teaching a priority. It does not have to be the priority, and that will be obviously a matter of contention, but it has to be a priority if we want to survive as institutions that bring value to our constituents. We have to survive and make teaching a priority if we want to move into the 21st century and not run out of things like food and water and power and disease and all these other things that we worry about as a society. All right? We talked about all these different things in terms of developing longitudinal studies ourselves, what it's going to be like not only within a semester but within a program or within five or ten years. Projects in a mixed-mode environment. This is the uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. This is faculty, students, administration all working together. Um, <laughs> it's not like three different leaves on a clover that are different parts of the same entity. We have to know, we have to be one group that is coming together to find ways to provide the optimum student experience, no matter what type of active learning or passive learning, whatever we want to do to bring this information to the next generation of engineers who are going to solve the problems. We have to find ways that we can work together to do this type of stuff because the entire world really, to some extent, is in our hands. And um, at this, I'd like to thank you very much, and we'll take, your, uh, take any questions you may have. And with the last presentation, okay, we have one question. It was the last presentation. Uh, I didn't understand the title. What does mixed mode, what were you referring to when you said mixed mode classroom? We wanted to set up in mixed mode classrooms an ability for a faculty member to go back and forth between different teaching styles, whatever they see fit, okay, so that we can combine a lecture in a laboratory or an auditorium or a discussion group, whatever may be the optimum way to provide a specific lesson at a given time. And we think that this is a real challenge in a lot of different places as we're looking at running out of classrooms or tech space or PCs or whatever it's going to be. Other questions? Are you guys all hungry for dinner? And cold. I'm sorry, many people are cold. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening.